All right, cool. So we're back to the the terminal, and then I'm gonna go over some of the changes that I've made. Uh, first, let's go to the find target script. So I did quite a lot of refactoring on this script. Um, and if you don't remember this find target script, it it's essentially uh, the thing that um, analyzes our entire network and then tries to suggest the optimal targets uh, or orders them in the, the order that they need to be, uh, I guess, uh, attacked. <laughs> um, so some of the changes that I made is I pulled out a lot of the logic from the main uh, the main function uh, into a whole bunch of helper functions. So these helper functions, let's start from this one. So this is the get potential targets. Uh, this was the uh, main logic for, I guess, the our find targets uh, script. And what it does is that it scans the entire network, looks at all the hackable nodes, um, and then uh, sorts them by some sort of uh, comparator field. Um, before we had uh, the max money, uh, but now we're using uh, the revenue yield, which is how much money you can potentially earn from the server. Uh, so if we go up to this uh, get comparator, uh, I, I believe nothing nothing really changed in get comparator. Um, the, on, the only thing that changed with that is the name. Uh, I realized that the nodes were ordered in descending order rather than ascending order from the previous video. Uh, so I just did the, the change here. Uh, mainly because um, when we return the potential targets, it returns it from the maximum to the minimum. So that's why it's a descending order, not an ascending order. Um, the I guess the, the biggest change here is the get node information. So I extended it. So instead of just returning just the name and then the max money and a whole bunch of... Um, I guess useless information or uh, well not useless but more like just metadata information uh, we actually ended up using uh, reporting quite a lot just so that we have a much better idea of uh, what what each node is doing and also what our pirates or the the ships uh, are doing within each of these targets um, so what do we return or uh, uh, rather what's what's new with this um, so as you can see I added a whole heap of fields about um, information about the server's RAM the required ports the money uh, the required hacking level and all that stuff but the key the key field here is the um, the revenue healed and also the strategy uh, so the first one is again the revenue yield, which is uh, which is again the uh, the amount of money that we can potentially earn from this server, and how we calculate that is um, by multiplying the hacking chance uh, by the maximum money. And what does this hack chance represent? It represents the chance of being successful. So let's say that the max money is a thousand dollars in the server and our hacking chance is around 10 percent meaning that 10 percent of the time we're going to succeed and this means that there's a there's a chance that we're going to get 10 percent of that maximum money uh, so that's what the revenue yield does and the reason why i decided that it's the the deciding factor is because it's going to affect how much money we can steal per second uh, the second, uh, I guess, biggest change is this get strategy, and essentially, it's a, uh, it's uh, another helper function, which uh, determines what the the pirate needs to do to the, this uh, target server to maximize uh, its returns. Uh, so, it, if you if we open up the give me money script, uh, you you would see quite a lot of similarities. So we check. Uh, we, we get the money threshold here, security threshold. We check the uh, current security level against the security threshold. Uh, essentially, it's a, a clone of the gimme money script, but without the actual call to these um, 
these uh, net script actions. So the first one here is, um, I guess, the the flog strategy. Uh, I, I I basically used um, pirate themed uh, strategies mainly because I like the idea of ships and pirates uh, when creating the script. So for flog, uh, whenever you see flog, it means weaken. And in pirate speak, it means uh, to beat up someone. So we're beating up the server. Uh, so flog is going to execute a grow and then a weaken uh, right afterwards uh, just so that we allocate money. And then the allocation for those resources is 30% grow and then 70% weaken and uh, i guess the, these are arbitrary numbers so you can tweak them as you wish but the the idea here is that if the server security level is greater than the uh, current security uh, or security threshold then we want to weaken the server mainly because it's too strong to actually hack um, and the reason why we add a grow here is so that um, we can also grow the money um, rather than wasting our resources and um, fully committing to just a weekend. Um, and then the second condition is uh, basically the, the grow condition here. So the grow condition. And what it's doing is that it, if the server's money available is less than the money threshold. So if you remember money threshold, the money threshold represents uh, when we're going to start uh, taking money from the server. Uh, then that means we need to put money into the server so we nourish it um, so the sequence is the same as I guess the the weekend so the flog strategy uh, but the only difference here is the the resource allocation so we want to allocate 60% on grow and then 40% on weaken and the reason why I allocate somewhat close to each other is because it actually increases the security quite a lot so that's the reason why I only allocate around 60% of it and then 40% on the weekend. Um, and then if uh, I guess all the if if the server doesn't have security and also has enough money to take, then we plunder it. So we uh, execute that hack, weaken, grow, weaken uh, sequence that we talked about in the mirror board. And then for in terms of resource allocation between them, we just want to execute equal amounts of threads on e each of them just so that we get equal amounts of effect. Um, so yeah, that, that's what it does. So it returns the, I guess, the, the strategy for each of these servers. Um, and then if we open, uh, run this find target script, you would get a report of what every single one of our servers are doing. So as you can see in the hub, uh, they're trying to nourish this because we depleted the money from the server. Comtech, we're trying to weaken the security, so we're trying to flog it. Uh, OmegaNet, we're trying to flog it. So we're trying to flog quite a lot of our servers, mainly because it has way too much security. All right, so that's that's fine targets. So that's the improvements that I made on the five targets. Um, and then I guess the the next one I want to cover is this pirate script. And this is the virus that gets executed within uh, our server. And if you if we look at I guess the the give me money script again, you would see that this is a much more lightweight version of the give me money script. Essentially, it takes uh, an action, target, and a delay, uh, as well as a, a PID. So this is a process ID. And the reason why we take a process ID is because if you, if we look at our active scripts here, um, there's some servers that are running uh, the same script on the same server, like this one. So P serve, uh, purchase server seven. And then if we look at this, we could see that um, this purchase server is running uh, Weekend on Comtech uh, twice. So it's running it in two different batches. Uh, so the first one and then the second one. And each of them has different thread allocations. Um, the reason why we want to uh, add in a, a PID on um, our list of arguments is because whenever you, um, I guess, run a script, 
it that um, it considers the arguments as part of that script name meaning that when you kill a script so if you with let's say that you kill um, you know like uh, auto deploy for example um, if you add in arguments after that so let's say fantasy or something like that or Joe's guns um, it's gonna treat both the auto deploy fantasy and auto deploy Joe's guns as to two separate um, scripts or two separate processes uh, so that's the reason why we want to add in a PID um, so that whenever we complete um, the execution on uh, one of these servers or we need some more resources on one of the servers then we could reallocate them regardless of whether or not they're already running a script on that server so that's that's why so we have a, a PID uh, just to make sure that every single uh, script is uh, is unique in in the game's eyes um, so that's that's what the pirate does and then um, we from the action that we pass in in the arguments we then execute the corresponding uh, command and if we look at again the target script script uh, you would see that a lot of these servers are have um, uh, are, are used to its maximum limit and the reason for that is because um, this script right here is exactly two gigabytes big uh, and since each of our purchase servers and every single one of these servers is divisible by two it means that when we divide it by the virus RAM uh, to find the threads then we get uh, an exact whole number rather than a, a decimal point meaning that we can allocate uh, all the the resources that we want uh, if we want to uh, so that's what the the pirate script does it's just a simplified version of the gimme money script and or more like a lightweight version of the gimme money script uh, and then this pirate script is launched through the launch fleets uh, script and this is a this is a chunky as code this is uh, very very advanced um, I already gone through the high level of it but um, let's let's take a deep dive on <laughs> how this this entire thing works